Hello, wildlings. I'm your Creepsmith, and you found my Fear Forge. <laughs> Lucky you. Tonight's tale, The Derelict. Did I scare you? Sorry, I was just unsettled when we reached that mall. There's a reason why I don't like dark places nowadays. Come on, I'll tell you the story over coffee. There was a fabled hole in the wall, located somewhere here in Providence. It seemed to be the center of controversy. Hitchhikers and night wanderers often passed by the hole only to be haunted by whatever malignant force lay inside. No officials started any investigations to lessen the brush fire it caused with the Rhode Island media. The most interesting of these cases are those that ended in madness. Almost 50 cases of hallucinations, delusions, and schizophrenia were all caused by that eponymous hole in the wall. The hole was located on the side of an ancient stone derelict. The strangest thing about it, and the hole in the wall, was their origins. No one had claimed the thing as a historical monument, even though the thing obviously looked as if it was older than dirt. The surrounding area seemed to have less people each day I was there, and I saw a few shops being torn down each day. Businesses were failing rapidly. Over two years ago, before I met you, I was still a novice writer and a mundane school teacher living in nearby Arkham. And I, uh, I heard the story from a friend. So I traveled all the way to Providence to investigate this strange hole in the wall, right? At first, I decided to look around and see the stability of the civilians living near the derelict. Now, I'm no doctor, but I saw something in their faces. That something had been sucked out from them. Energy life force, something like that. I interviewed a few families who encountered the hole in the wall, which they tell me is strongest at night, even though in day it was not impotent either, which was why the derelict was abandoned in the first place. People couldn't linger there for long. Most who tried almost died, and certainly had problems in their heads afterwards. I interviewed a few people, most of them the maddened, catatonic survivors of the ills that plagued the derelict. I can't tell you how unsettling it was to talk to them. Some of them refused to make eye contact altogether, while others couldn't even speak. Those usually stared into space. A few told their tales, and it always ended the same way, in some kind of terror that rippled through the air in a strange blast of horror. The victims started running away, only to see some nameless dread creeping from the shadows. Oh, <laughs> good. You're not laughing. I thought you might. I, I didn't recall anyone that I had told this story who took it seriously. But I've known you for a while now, and both of us have a strange tendency to enjoy the more horrifying things in life. Honey, you know I've read that guy Stephen King and his predecessor Lovecraft and how they talk about the thin places in the universe, the strange things lurking behind them. Now, people in those stories often go mad from the unnameable horrors behind these tears in reality. Who could have known that all of these things were happening behind that little hole in the wall? In that darkness, there was nothing, and there was everything. After days of sleepless nights, my battered self decided to know what was inside the dark hole. Was something lurking down there, looking at me with eldritch eyes? I had to know. God help me, Al. I had to know. When I started, to sleep again, the hole tortured me in my dreams. I cracked, and I bought a gun to kill whatever thing might have inhabited it. 
was the most foolish thing I've ever done. And to this day, I should have known to leave the maddening thing alone. I drove there at night in the pouring rain. A drunk saw me on foot walking up the path that led to the derelict. He told me repeatedly to stop what I was doing and get the hell out of there. He tried to stop me with words, but to no avail. After repeated arguments, the man just stood there as I walked a few steps forward. From him I heard a strange moaning sound and I looked back to see what was wrong. The abomination standing behind me was a strange caricature of the drunk, only this creature had more eyes and smiles. Under the rain and the pale moonlight, I saw what seemed to be mouths replacing the thing's eyes and a huge, pallid eye in the place of a human mouth. The head was convulsing from side to side quickly, and the aberration moaned as its head recklessly jerked from one side to another. Its limbs were nothing but appendages with mouths and a black mass of feelers constituted its legs. The thing was looking at me, and with a demonic, guttural groan, it spoke. He who he walks, walks behind, behind the road, road. he, he wails beyond, beyond, beyond the wall, he, he who speaks, speaks with sullen, sullen screams, screams. He, has he has many names, names and in the darkness he waits, in the darkness he waits, in the darkness he waits. It spoke of the madness that waited beyond the dark, desolate hole, which I saw in my dreams. Rectangular and large enough for a man to fall into, and sometimes said the names of the dreadful things that I conjured up in my sleep. It beckoned me to leave. It reached out to me with one rubbery appendage, and I almost screamed with fear at that eldritch thing when I heard the song of the derelict. It told me to kill the thing, to shoot it. The derelict whispered, it's bad. I looked back at the maddening guardian and shot it in its eye. The derelict was singing to me. It easily could have been the wind. Sometimes it moans, sometimes it whispers. But, but I knew whatever things haunted that stone were trying to talk to me. They spoke of different worlds, cyclopean ranges of eldritch proportions, of geometries that shamed Euclid. It was something that would cause a normal man to lose his sanity, and in that moment, I almost did. Yet I pulled through, bearing the rain and the voices. Come closer, they whispered. I pushed through, flashlight in hand. The whispers and the moans became nothing more than warbles. It was like a siren in the hands of a dying man. With a few more steps, I reached it, the hole. I pointed my dying light at the object that haunted me so in restless dreams, and for a split second, I saw that madness that had stalked me, a body full of wrong and nothing right. Aberrations that freeze the blood, sounds that would have driven a man into his very death, and in the madness of this gnawing cavity, this void of reality, this thin place, I heard it speak my name. I heard it cackle, and it beckoned me to stay with it, to meet its master, the true god of the void. I fired again. The nameless dread that lived in that rectangular hole screamed, and for once, I beheld births of negative suns and anti-Earths, of black universes where nothing existed and everything existed. I saw at the demoniac center of the universe the sleeping madness, the true opposite of everything. You understand opposites, right? Hot and cold, love and hate, light and dark. But these aren't opposites. 
these are the lack of something. A lack of heat leads to cold. A lack of love, your love, brings me to hatred. A lack of light doesn't let me see. But this was different. This was the true opposite, the antithesis of everything in order. It was chaos incarnate, but before I went insane, I was forced back into this world. I found myself in the car, my gun wasn't with me, and a dead body lay where the drunk had turned, shot to death. The keys were in the ignition and the derelict was not there. Something felt different about the place. It felt, strangely, safer, better. The torn reality between the realm of sanity and madness was repaired in Providence, Rhode Island on that day. But the nightmares kept coming. That was two years ago. Things changed. The place, well, was lost forever. Last I heard of it, the place where the derelict was built upon was turned into a shopping mall. And after that, I didn't hear of it again. Do you believe that even the tightest repairs of fabric can fall apart again? That mall that we passed by, it looks as if it's running out of business. And I've been having those dreams again. So stay scary, my wildlings. Remember that if you want to win or even survive, you're gonna have to learn the rules before you play the game and make the most of your nights.